Now, in a similar manner, we can solve for the number of periods that we need to uh, hold an investment for in order to earn a certain amount. Uh, so let's look at this first example. Let's say that you need to buy a car when you graduate college. Uh, you've been riding the bus the whole time, but of course, when you graduate college, you go to a bigger city, you want a car to get around, uh, you want a, you want to buy a nice car. So you want to buy a car for $40,000, but right now you have 25,000 saved up. Uh, so if you can earn 8%, how much longer do you need to stay in college before you can get out and buy the car of your dreams? Right. So uh, again, this is usually a dead giveaway for problems because it'll say something like, how long do you have to do something? Well, that means how many periods do we need to wait for this investment to mature? And that means if we're solving for n, we need to know the present value, we need to know the future value, and we need to know the IOI, all right? So I can solve for any one of these four things as long as I know the other three, which is, of course, you know, standard algebraic practice. Uh, we need, uh, in an equation, we can only have one unknown. So the present value is how much do I need to invest? I have $25,000 saved up. I've got to invest it in something that's gonna earn 8% and turn it into 40, right? If I don't do anything with this money, nothing happens to it. So I'm going to invest it. That means it's a cash outflow of 25,000 in my savings account. The future value that I'm hoping for is 40,000. That's what I need to buy my car. And my IY here is 8% per year. I want to know how long I need to wait before this investment account turns my 25,000 into 40 and I can buy the car that I want. So I pull out the trusty calculator and I start by clearing the time value money button, second and future value. My present value is the amount that I'm investing. This is my cash outflow. So it is negative 25,000 and then present value. Future value is the amount that I need at the end of the investment, which is $40,000, and that's my future value. IY is 8% per year. That's how much I can earn in this investment. And if I compute my N, I find that I need to wait 6.1070 years. Again, remember that the period of my output will agree with the period of my inputs. So in this case, I have an 8% return per year. I need to wait six more years in college before I can get out and buy the car of my dreams, which means, you know, most of you guys are juniors or seniors. You've got to probably get a master's, maybe part of a PhD before you can graduate and buy your car. Okay. Now, the second problem is similar. It says you have been saving to start a business and you realize that you still have to pay the patent lawyers in order to file for a patent. You only have $50,000 and a patent costs 75,000. How much longer do you need to wait to file the patent if your money earns 14% compounded annually? So again, uh, it's pretty straightforward laying out what we need to do. How much longer do we need to wait? So we're trying to solve for the number of periods this investment is gonna last then we need the present value of the investment, the future value of the investment, and the rate that we're going to earn. Again, we have a problem with an investment here, right? Again, the only way we turn 50,000 into 75,000 is by investing it into something. So our present value is the money we start with, $50,000, but that's a cash outflow because we are beginning a new investment with it. We want that money to turn into 75,000, which is our future value. And we're gonna earn 14% and that's compounded annually. So we're gonna earn 14% per year. Now we need to compute the end. How long do we need to lay in this investment? So I'll clear out. I will clear my time value of money with second and future value. Then we'll plug everything in. $50,000 is my cash outflow. That's how much I'm starting my new investment with. So negative 50 is my present value. 75,000 is what I want at the end of the account. That's how much I need to file for this patent. So that's my future value. And I'm gonna earn 14% per year in this investment. So I compute my N and I get 
3.0945 years. Again, period of my output agrees with the period of my input. And again, another example of a really terrible business decision. If you want to start a business and you have a really good idea, but you don't have enough money to patent it, you should just start the business or find a way to borrow the money if you absolutely think you need a patent to continue. Right? There isn't. Uh, if you wait three years to start your business because you're waiting three years to start a patent, somebody is either going to figure it out first or you're going to miss your opportunity. Right? So don't always take these examples that we're working here uh, in the lecture as, uh, as good ideas. They're just, again, totally made up.